Hi, I'm Phil Malton. Welcome to Snowbiller Television. Years ago, this is how you got around in the deep snow, and trust me, it wasn't easy. Today, we're going to go to the deep powder of the backcountry and try out the 2015 mountain sleds. We're also going to go to Labrador to see preparations for Kane's Quest. We're going to drop by with John Sherrard to go over the latest in snowmobile suspensions, and we're going to go to Kimpex to check out the latest in CKX helmets. STV is sponsored by Yamaha, revs your heart. Kimpex, fueled by fun. And by Skidoo, never stop pushing. The sale of trail sleds may have slipped a little in the last few years, but the sales of mountain sleds has definitely been on the increase. To find out why this is, our crews dropped by the Edmonton Snowmobile Show to find out. Two of our new items uh, that we're bringing to the plate this year are our brand new SeaTech uh, M6000, SeaTech 2, uh, new technology, direct injection, uh, great on fuel, sits oil. Uh, we also have the new M7000, which is our partnership with Yamaha 1049cc triple. Um, this is a C, the CTEC 4 technology. So, and then of course, ending up in the M8000, we have it available in 153 and the 162. Uh, and then of course, the big daddy, the M9000, running 177 horsepower. We uh, really wanted to focus in on all stages of riders, from, from the entry level with our new 6000, right through to the more high end, uh, people that go in the back country with our M9000. We got an all new Yamaha Viper MTX. It's a brand new sled for 2015 for us. It's uh, got, of course, our Genesis engine, uh, three cylinder, combined with a fantastic chassis that's got a, it comes in a 153 and a 162 variation, a 2.6 track, uh, full mountain, uh, mountain platform, uh, narrow front end, of course, the proper seat for mountain riding, uh, chassis for mountain riding, the 2.6 track on it and uh, very lightweight package. As well, we're uh, partnered, of course, with MPI Turbos. We've got a, a vendor sourced uh, approved turbo kit that can be installed uh, right at the time of purchase with the machine. New for 2015, we have our Terrain Dominator Series sleds, which come from the factory with Walker Evans clicker shocks. Uh, and factory storage options as well, including like a tunnel bag and a handlebar bag, uh, and a different graphics package, of course. Uh, one thing, the shocks alone change the complete riding of that sled night and day, and make it a complete different sled from a normal Pro RMK. But we see sales growing. We had an excellent snow check last year for 2015. Uh, so far, year to date, sales are up. Uh, people seem to be very happy with the sled and uh, we're happy to have it. It's still one of the lightest and best applicable sleds on the market. This year, of course, we've got the, the T3 package, which is, you know, people kind of, I think, want the sled to look different. They think that, the, you know, until it does, it doesn't change. But every year, the Skidoo product has just gotten easier to ride, um, right from the beginner right up to the, the best letters in the world that we have riding our, our, our machines. And um, that T3 package, uh, fortunately, I got a, a lot of seat time in one last year, and it, it's, it's amazing. I think people are uh, skeptical of a 174, whether, it, you know, everybody talks about whether it can pull that track, whether the motor can do it. And I always tell people it's, it's like looking at a dirt bike and a trials bike. A trials bike needs half the horsepower but can go way more places and up steeper things over a dirt bike because it has the torque. And that's what that 174 track does. I mean, it, we could not believe, when, where you see it is when you compare a 154, 163 and a 174. And I mean, you can literally walk that sled up anything. And it, it just keeps going and you, it's not like you need, um, 
you know, you don't need to be going 100 miles an hour to make it up a steep hill. You can literally get it on edge, which you can with the XM. It's so easy to do to pull over and then ride it right out of stuff. And, and that makes it easy for the beginner right up to the, to the pro. We also wanted to find out why the mountain market is so popular. I would strongly believe the mountain segment has improved, number one, because of the equipment. I mean, you know, just talking about uh, Skidoo in general, with the, with the XP and then now the XM, I mean, you just see a new, you can basically take a new rider out and say, follow me, and they can literally follow you. Now, they're, they're still going to make mistakes and get stuck, but that's a lot different than 10 years ago where, I mean, I remember when I learned how to, how to ride a, a machine and I couldn't believe, I mean, I was stuck every 15 minutes. Uh, I take friends out personally skiing or sledding and you know they all think it's easy and then they get out there and they can't believe the workout that it is and they and then they can't believe where they are that's the, the best part is actually where it gets you in the backcountry these are places that you will never get to and it would take you weeks to get to places that you can get to over a weekend on, on a snowmobile and that's what I love about it is the is the adventure of uh, I mean it's real adventure it's it's you're exploring areas that you just you know most people just don't get to see When buying a new snowmobile, snowmobilers sometimes buy an entry-level shock package or they spend the big money and go for the top-of-the-line shock package. Sometimes neither group is 100% happy. So to answer some questions, we've got John here today to say and explain what are they, what, what are they doing wrong. Well, quite often it might not be what the rider is doing wrong, but in setting up the machine. Many dealers don't have the expertise to really help the rider set the machine up for their type of riding style they're doing, their weights, the luggage they carry, do they carry a passenger. So at Accelerated Technologies, we try and work with the rider one-on-one -on -one to give them the best setup they can. We work with them on their shock package uh, OEM. We'll do setups on original shock packages or we can perhaps suggest a much better shock package. Some levels of machines you can purchase with a steel body, non-serviceable, non-tunable shock package and we would recommend an upgrade to an Elka shock package or they might have a, a, a premium high low speed compression rebuildable shock perhaps from the factory and with that we would more help them tune getting the best they can out of that shock package. So there's both a tuning and an upgrading? Yeah, yeah, we can we can look at each case individually and suggest the right thing for the budget. If they've already got decent shocks, we're not going to tell them they got to throw them out and start again. We'll work with them until we find the limit of that OEM shock package. We go back to the 80s and the first IFS sleds and the first you know, oil shocks. Things have changed a lot since then. How, how, how has it changed for the riders of the sleds? Well, they, they have and they haven't because some of the base packages are the exact same technology from 25, 30 years ago. We have these beautiful snowmobiles with rising rate skid frames and wonderful spindles, great engine packages and $10, $15 shocks in them. So those are where we try and offer a great improvement by getting them into, say, an Elka shock package. But you can also buy an, an XRS package or a double R premium package. Uh, all the manufacturers have an upgraded package you can, you can select. And with that, you're starting to get some modern technology, floating pistons, compression rebound, uh, serviceable shocks, tunable shocks with different spring rate systems. So yeah, there's lots out there. Well, to be honest, the smartest decision sometimes is to buy the buy an entry level snowmobile with with coil over shocks, and then take the money you saved and put it into a really good performance shock package. The aftermarket shock companies I work with, Elka and Olin's, uh, offer a shock that is superior in in some ways and in most ways to some of the uh, some of the best. OEM shock packages available. In terms of durability, spring rate selection, uh, control, adjustability, tunability, uh, we have shock packages that are superior to what's available from the OEMs. I'm one of those people that when it's a riding day, I want to ride. I don't want to see people lifting sleds, flipping sleds and doing adjustments. Where do you think the adjustments should be made? Can it all be done pre-ride or is adjusting on the ride part of, part of our life? 
Uh, it's a great question. The, the skids in the last five years have gotten so much better. The, uh, the progressive skids from Polaris and Skidoo have a much wider setup window. Arctic Cat and Yamaha also have the slide action front suspension is a fantastic suspension. They have a much broader setup window now. You don't have to pass the groomer and get off your machine and adjust it. Um, they, they work better over a wider range of situations. We encourage people to set the sags or let us help you set the sags so that you can tune the, tune the ride height of the vehicle to your weight or you and your passenger's weight. That's an adjustment that's really mandatory. Then we kind of look at the balance of the skid frame, where the, does the limiter strap perhaps need tuning or adjusting, and then we look at the front of the, the ski package. Uh, how much preload is on it? Does it have an air shock package? Or is the rider complaining about ride compliance? Does it corner flat? What is the rider's desires to, to the machine and how can we help them best uh, meet those requirements? That's a lot of information and a lot of help. Thanks a lot, John. And uh, hopefully today, this winter, we can get out riding and you can help me how to set up a sled so I'll stop whining. <laughs> I'd love to. Thank you very much. Thank Bob. you. Okay. On today's Kane's Quest feature, the racers prep for the start of the race. Prior to the race, most teams have been scouting the routes on sleds, checking terrain through maps, and planning the best they can to find an approach that will prove successful in conquering Kane's Quest. Here are some thoughts the racers shared on the challenges and strategies ahead. Ah, the, no the northern coast is going to be fairly difficult as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot of, a lot of rocks. It's the same as before, you know, like we got, we got uh, deep snow sections and we got no snow sections, you know, so. Whether we place or not, it's not a concern to us. As long as we could say we tried to do 3,300 kilometers over five, six days, that's something to be really proud of. We, we draw 30th last in line, so uh, we'll pick them off one by one, uh, see where we get at that after the first day. I've had a chance to run uh, most of the south coast, um, pretty familiar with uh, western Labrador, and uh, have not run the north coast this year. I think uh, from what I'm hearing, there's no snow in the north. The south is blessed with uh, lots of snow. It's uh, windswept and blown quite hard. I think there'll be a lot of suspension failures uh, through the south coast, working our way up to Nain. Anything can happen with this race. It's a bit of luck. It's a lot of skill. It's a lot of everything. Mechanical knowledge. It's, it tests everybody, without a doubt. My partner grew up on the south coast, right? It's, it's his stomping ground, so I hope that's going to be a, a little bit of a benefit for to us. Um, whether it is or not, it doesn't matter. We're just going to take our time and chug along, and whatever comes our way will come our way. It's too long. It's too long, and I'm not familiar with the coast, South Coast Labrador. So back there, I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to follow whatever, whatever guys go. Uh, and uh, North Coast Labrador, I'll try my best. Yeah, I think everyone's going to leave here and try to hold stuff together. And then on the home stretch, I'd say you're going to see the yellow brick tracker speeds spike. I'd say it's going to break into a full, full race in the last six, 700 kilometers. Part of the challenge of running a backcountry race is for organizers to know who is where and when, what the leaderboard looks like, and of course, safety. Covering well over 3,300 kilometers, this race isn't exactly spectator friendly. So watching online is the attraction for many thousands keen to know the race updates. This year, the Keynes Committee opted for a new tracking partner which transmits ping signals to GPS satellites every 10 minutes from each of the race team sleds. Two reasons. One is for their own safety and for us as organizers to find or locate them in the case of an emergency. And the main priority reason is to provide a viewer or a uh, display of the race for our customers, our public viewing audience, and uh, that's what keeps us alive. Choice of sled is a big decision for each rider as well as a team collectively. The nastiness of the terrain is the ultimate durability test, and of course, brand loyalty comes into question as the partners have to figure out their best options for snowmobiles and what modifications need to be done. We're riding the new uh, Yamaha Vipers. Well, first year they were made, the nitro motor been out for a few years. I've been riding the Yamahas now since I've been old enough to drive. 
So they combined with Articat this year for the chassis and the fourth row Knights and motor. So hopefully we got the machine to do the race with. That's the part that got me on board was the Articat. I've been Articat uh, pretty much for a few years, and now when they came out with a engine and clutches is the big thing, the Yamaha. I was impressed with that. So uh, with the Articat chassis and stuff, we're hoping to something that'll uh, bring us home. I want to fence my Tundra. <laughs> I had Tundras last time. So we're riding bigger machines this year, the 800s uh, summits. And I look at the machines, they're easy to stock, though, the other ones, right? And uh, easy on the gas, we can go probably 200 kilometers for those Scandics, right? Trying to wreck my lens at the start of the day. Okay, Marty. Uh, I haven't done any makeup yet, but I got my hair done. Nice. Amazing, right? So uh, here we are again, 2014. Another, another race, we're all ready to go. Yeah, so. Get the good looking hat guy here. Oh, yes. That's my race show off here. <laughs> That's my lucky hat. The race all come back. Well, the the ball 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 very lucky for Fox. It is race day, and as the teams gather, they also attract local family and friends to the frozen fields of the soccer complex in Labrador City. Final preparations are reduced to mere tweaks as the racers check their sleds and gear awaiting for their number to be called to the start line. Next week, the race is on. 3,300 kilometers through the toughest terrain Labrador has to offer. Wearing a snowmobile helmet has always been a must, whether it be modular, full face, or snowcross style. And if you're wearing one of these old buckets like I still have in my collection, you need to update your helmet. So let's go to CKX and see what they have to offer. CKX band was created back in 1991. And back then, all you needed was security. This is the type of helmet that was designed back then. We've then moved up to a little bit more features, like a double lens shield, fiberglass helmet. Nowadays, CKX offers a helmet for each riding style. Either a full face modular helmet for your trail rider, or a snowcross style helmet for your off trail riders. In a snowcross style helmet, we offer a TX696, which is a lightweight, polycarbonate shell, fully removable interior liner, so you can wash it in warm soapy water and hang it up to dry. Gives it a brand new smell. Also has a D-ring and a snap to prevent the strap from flopping around. The TX696 offers a toolless operation to remove the visor. If you break it or drop it, you can easily remove it without any tools. A breath box is also offered for this snowcross style helmet for long riding on colder days. This is our new Trans 1.5 CKX helmet. It has a lot of features. The front vent, the top vent, which exhausts in the back. It's a one hand operation for the visor. It also has a removable sun visor. Comes in amber. Our option is dark small. In the CKX Trans 1.5, one of the new feature is our breath box. Formerly made of neoprene, now it is all made of rubber. So when you lift the modular portion up, it doesn't freeze up on you. And remember, when you purchase a CKX helmet, you receive a three-year warranty. But don't forget to register online to receive an extra two years. There are many factors to consider when choosing a new helmet. While many people go with style and color, it's actually the fit that's most important when replacing your old helmet.
All snowmobiles from vintage right through to the high horsepower turbocharged sleds of today need a reliable belt. We talked to the folks at Carlisle to discuss the challenges that this presents to them as a belt manufacturer. It does, it does create a challenge. Uh, you know, we tend, we tend to develop our belts, you know, uh, based on the higher horsepower, you know, which, which if, we, if we feel that we have something that's that robust and that reliable, that dependable, that well engineered, it should work on, on every sled. Now, we, we develop our belts in a, in a diff, somewhat different from some of our competitors. We basically design a belt that's based on that type of machine. It's, we don't have a good, better, best. It's low, medium, high horsepower. We feel that we should have the right belt for the machine. Over the years, I've heard it's riding conditions, it's heat, it's horsepower. Those are the biggest challenges for belts. Is that still true today, or is that one, one, one of those aspects that's making it tougher? Those are the three of the majors. You know, maintenance of the machine does make a big difference. You know, misalignment of the clutches will, will affect belt life. And, you know, with, with the, the, the aggressive riders and the terrain and that sort of thing, I mean, you know, generally it's good to have your machine checked for clutch alignment to make sure that you can, you can have a... Uh, a, a performing drive system as well as the uh, longevity of the drive system. You've seen a lot of changes. Oh yeah, through the through the through the industry through the years, it, there has been a lot of a lot of great technological advances. I mean, the, the, it's a long stretch from the from the bone jarring days, you know, of the 80s. You know, the the machi machines today are very sophisticated. The suspensions are very sophisticated. I mean, it, they they have come a long way over the years. Thanks for all that information and insight. Appreciate it. You're quite welcome. I wouldn't be able to push the limits in the backcountry like I do without the support of my friends. STV is sponsored by Ultimax Belts. Performance proven, performance driven. Triton Trailers, the difference is in the details. And by CKX, swear your passion. Next week on Snow Riller TV, we head west to see what the mountain riders do to customize their sleds and do some power modifications. Speaking of customizing, everybody's riding style is different, so is your clothing. We go to Kimpax to talk about clothing for each individual rider. And we're also going to go ditch banging on the latest of the 2015 offerings. We love your feedback, so email us at info at snowwheelertv.com and be sure to visit the STP website for our online videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the snow.